The Kobo Libra 2 is a direct successor to the Kobo Libra H2O that was released more than two years ago in 2019. This employs a lot of the same elements including the overall form factor, the design with the asymmetrical buttons on the side, the nice Kobo logo on the bottom left corner, and the sunken screen and bezel. The back is changed a little bit with a tighter weave pattern of the faux perforated leather look. The power button is on the back and it has a USB-C port this time around. But how is it really different than the Kobo H2O? Well, let's look at some specs side by side before we continue. They're both 7 inches, although the 2 is using a e-ink Carta 1200 touchscreen. This is the latest generation of touchscreen. The 2 also has 4 times the storage at 32 gigs, the exact same processor, and the same battery life, same Wi-Fi, and same IPX8 rating. It is heavier at 215 grams. They have the exact same supported formats and languages, although the 2 has audiobook support, which is a huge selling point. The price is also a little bit weird, it's all over the place. For example, in the US, the new Kobo Libra 2 is $10 more than the previous H2O, but in Japan, the new 2 is $20 less than the previous H2O. Specs on paper aside, something is only as good as the way it performs in real life. You could measure numbers all day long, but if it's not good when you're actually using it, then it's not good. The home screen is laid out in a very familiar fashion. You have your percentage read of whatever you've just read, your recommended, the books on your device, and related reads based on the books on your device. So this is all going to be mostly stuff that is on the store related side of things and all of your stuff is going to be local up there and right there. My books is everything that's going to be locally stored on your device including side loaded content. There's various ways you can organize this by books, authors, series, collections, everything is just a tap away, everything will organize itself accordingly and you can tap here for some additional options including cover view in which case it'll give you some thumbnails so you can really know what you're going to click on. Discover is going to be the internet side of things. This is where you're going to have your audiobooks, your purchase decisions, this is where you're going to have recommended things, you can buy now, add your credit card, that's all where it's going to happen here. Audiobooks are where you're going to find your audiobooks. You have things you can buy up top and you have some free bows down below so you can click on those and listen to a free preview. You also have access to Kobo Plus which is for $9.99 a month free unlimited reading of everything that is Kobo Plus compatible. It won't be everything absolutely ever in the world but you do have a pretty wide variety of things you can read and it does come with a free 30-day trial except for Quebec for some reason. This does have overdrive as well if you want to learn more about this on how to load books in from your local library you can watch some of our other videos on our YouTube channel. If you go over to more you have some other things here including wish list articles etc. Whereas Amazon changed their experimental browser to a web browser after 11 generations unfortunately Kobo still stashes their browser under beta features so I guess all the kinks just aren't completely worked out yet. At the top it doesn't have a drop down so to speak but you can click on all of these individually. You can get your glow light, you can check in on your Wi-Fi, check in on your battery, click your sync, or click search in which case you can search by author, series, or ISBN. Sometimes it'll remember via the gyroscope what you were on last time, whether it was portrait or landscape. Because this is a 7 inch, not a 6.8, not a 7.8, but a 7 inch, it is adequate when it comes to PDFs. Now it is not the best and PDFs start to look okay at 10.3, so we're still a little bit a ways away. But if you had to use PDFs, you can. It is a decent experience. You do have the ability to do some things like long presses, dictionary definitions, Wikipedia searches, etc. You can take advantage of pinch and zoom, although the mini map takes quite a while to show up in fact. Sometimes it doesn't show up at all and then when you let go, 
it either does or does not show up and then when you zoom out it finally does show up so there's a little bit of software kinks with that that it doesn't actually start right away although you do have these physical page turn buttons which is basically a huge draw for this unit that's the reason they're there they're very prominent and no more so evident than in an ebook selling points aside this is why you're buying this you're buying it to read books the kobo is no better at anything else than to give you an ebook experience. The page turns are very quick. You can tap, you can swipe, and you can use the physical page turn buttons, which is very good to get a tactile feel. Now they have this little lip that pops up and it's very nice because it fits your thumb perfectly. If you don't like it on the right, you can use the automatic gyroscope to put it on the left. More importantly, what I personally like, and a lot of people agree around the office, is that putting it into landscape is actually a little bit more comfortable. It fits alongside with the page turn button locations and the Kobo logo, and you get some pretty good margins. In fact, this actually gives you a much better experience with the formatting of the screen than the portrait does. Long pressing on a word, you get some Wikipedia, some internet search functions, and highlight, add note, and search locally here. You can also add a note like so. Typing is very quick, it's actually extremely responsive. Saves your notes, you can access it from the side. You can bookmark on the top right corner like so. Tapping in the center, you do have your text options. Kobo's always been really good at this. They don't give you a bunch of A's, they actually give you a slider bar. And why this is important is because the combinations are endless when it comes to this. You can also click on here and choose different fonts. When you go to a different font, you get advanced, in which case they take it a step further. You can switch the before and after to see exactly what you want it to look like. You can apply or you can revert back to stock or just exit out if you get a little bit too carried away with your changes. A little secret here, you have fast nav. If you press and hold the physical page turn buttons, you navigate through a lot of the book without any screen refreshes and minimal staining surprisingly. It does however refresh when you let go, but that's a small price to pay for a very fluid navigation. In Japan, a lot of the promotional information tells you to read manga on this thing. Half the pictures are devoted to that. However, in the North American market, they're really pushing audiobooks. And this is because you can do that now. However, it doesn't have any speakers or a headphone jack. So you have to rely on Bluetooth, which isn't that bad because all you do is just get yourself some Bluetooth speakers, which are incredibly cheap. You can get Bluetooth speaker clock built-in combos for $9. The whole process is ridiculously easy. This no-name Bluetooth clock was able to be found immediately. You click on that, it syncs up. In fact, it's going to tell you the battery level of the no-name clock and some settings and whether it's connected or not. And you can simply click out and just start playing your audiobook. I sat waiting for the Prime Minister to arrive. The terminal is distant and isolated, far from the bustling main terminal and the eyes of the public and the media. My husband, Tim, had dropped me off and then parked to wait for me among the cars of the Prime Minister's motorcade. The PM was late. Building in me was a creeping realization that this was the beginning of the end. It was here. The time had come. It had been three days since Robert Fife's front page page story in the Globe and Mail. Now, because this has absolutely no audio hardware built in, we can't comment on the quality of it because the quality is only going to be as good as the hardware you're using, whether it's a very, very good wireless Sony set of wireless speakers or it's going to be your wireless headphones or something like that. This has to be one of the cleanest lights we've seen in recent times. There is absolutely no differences between the corners, the centers, and the top and bottom. A lot of the time, even on most recent devices, we see some puffing or some overexposure in the corners. This is fantastic. You also have the natural light to smooth things out a little bit. Now, it doesn't change live, which always kind of bugs us. You see, as you swipe it, it doesn't do anything. You actually have to let go of it for it to act. But this is really nice because you have brightness control, you have auto based on the time of day, not the actual sensor, and you have the bedtime feature as well. So you can choose what time you want it to be the warm lighting portion of it. So this is a really nice glow light and this is one of the things that they have on the back of the box, the Comfort Light Pro. Is the Kobo Libra 2 leaps and bounds above the Kobo H2O? 
Well, no, it's the same screen size, same resolution, same battery, same Wi-Fi, and overall same design. It is using a more crisp screen, four times the storage, and you can play audiobooks on it. But it is heavier, and it's more expensive in some markets. However, if you don't have the money or don't want to splurge on the note-taking Sage, this is a very viable option for something that is middle of the ground and decently feature packed. If you guys have any other questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. Follow Goody Reader at goodyreader.com. Follow me at Togetrial. And for a full review of the Kobo Libra 2, this is Peter.